The pictures are mute, but there's no mistaking the ferocity of this battle. The scene is the headquarters of Turkish intelligence, where those guarding it are firing at rebel helicopters. One branch of the state at war with another. This is CCTV footage bizarrely released by Turkey's spy agency, ever loyal to President Erdogan. The cradle of any democracy is its parliament, and the lobby of this one is a ruin. Just after 20 to 3 on Saturday morning, it was bombed repeatedly by rebel jets and helicopters from Turkey's own air force. This morning, MPs and their staff were wandering around in disbelief at this extraordinary act of betrayal. Turkey is not Syria or Iraq, but for a few tumultuous hours, this NATO member on Europe's doorstep appeared to be heading in that direction. This attack was a direct assault on Turkey's parliamentary democracy, a rare and precious thing in this part of the world. But the fear is that the president's response to it is turning into a witch hunt, which will make this place weaker and not stronger. This roundup goes way beyond the usual suspects. Not just these senior military officers, but thousands of other civil servants either detained or sacked. Nearly 8,000 police have been suspended. These are the alleged ringleaders, some of their faces bruised. Are you happy, they are asked sarcastically. They give their names and ranks, mostly generals and admirals, before they shuffle away. When some appeared in court today, panic broke out. A man believed to be a soldier started shooting before he was arrested, and many Turks say they want the ringleaders dead. Mehmet Kochakaya was one of those killed when a helicopter opened fire on civilians below. His parents told me their 22-year-old son had climbed on top of a tank to stop the coup and that his killers were traitors. There is no need to arrest them. You should just put them in the square and hang them and move on. My son saved the country. He didn't side with the gangsters, but stood with the state. This is Ankara's police headquarters, also strafed by rebel aircraft. Faced with this destruction and loss of life, President Erdogan has suggested that the death penalty, abolished 12 years ago, may be brought back. But Yasha Yakush, Erdogan's first foreign minister, before he was expelled from the party for disloyalty, believes the president sees this crisis as an opportunity not to be wasted. Are you worried Turkey is becoming essentially one man elected rule? It is going in that direction and uh, I hope that at some stage this evolution has to be stopped. It doesn't look like it's going to be stopped. The president's getting stronger from the failed coup. But there is a general golden rule in social sciences which says that power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely. So the more the, the power becomes absolute, the more it corrupts the leaders. Is that what's happening in Turkey? So far, yes, this rule played a very important role in the uh, political career of Erdogan. Is Mr. Erdogan going mad? I mean, is he, is he obsessed, is he crazed with keeping power? Mad, no, but uh, he, he is capitalizing on it. He's very pragmatic and doesn't mi uh, miss any opportunity. If he's right, so much more than physical damage may be inflicted here. The very fabric of Turkey's democracy is now at risk. President Erdogan not just changing the guard, but recasting it in his own image. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Ankara.